Growing up, I always stayed away from anything horror, but I decided to withstand the spookiness and give Dead by Daylight the old college try. Will I be able to escape from the killer, or will I be sacrificed by the lack of accessibility? I'm one hand mostly here to break down the accessibility in video games, to make an informed decision on whether a game can be played by you. And if you're a new accessible gamer here, make sure to click that subscribe button, and all my links are in the description below. Make sure to stay to the end to find out which killer I think is the most accessible. So let's roll right into my accessibility review. Dead by Daylight has been a game that's been on my radar for a long time. It's a 4v1 horror survivor game where the survivors try to outlast and escape the killer. For a low mobility user, the game splits up the keybinds for playing as the survivor and as the killer. Being able to rebind the controls are pretty much the only accessibility settings in Dead by Daylight. The game offers one input per control, with some of the controls being unique depending on which side you're playing. Changing the keybinds does change them in the UI, so you don't have to remember your new inputs. First, I'll start off by playing as a survivor. The goal is to repair five generators in order to power up the door to exit the map. You can either sprint or crouch your way around the map. Sprinting leaves red scratch marks that only the killer can see, while crouching lowers the sounds you make, decreasing the chance of being detected. Unfortunately, you have to hold the inputs to either sprint or move while crouching. I bring up both crouching and sprinting because I wish there was a setting that made both of these toggles. It would make moving around the map so much easier. And you may have noticed in past videos, I bring up when inputs are toggles versus holds. It's because as a low mobility user, I have difficulty holding multiple inputs at the same time. My fingers just aren't able to do it. And when they are, it just puts a lot of stress on my body. As I mentioned earlier, the survivors need to repair five generators. To begin repairing, you must hold the interact input, which for me is left click. While repairing, a skill check will randomly appear, requiring the player to press a separate input within the sweet spot. Hitting this spot will further progress the repairing. However, if you miss the sweet spot, the generator will spark, alerting the killer. If I didn't have to hold the input to repair, playing as a survivor would be much more accessible. I would like to see a setting that makes interactions a toggle. That way I could survey my surroundings with my mouse to get a better idea where the killer is coming from. Now on to playing Dead by Daylight as the killer. The objective is to sacrifice the four survivors via hooks that are scattered across the map. There are multiple killers to choose from, each with their own abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. The killers don't sprint, so moving around the map is fairly easy. In order to get the survivors on hooks, they must take damage twice. The first hit will put them into a wounded state, allowing the survivor to limp around the map, slowing them down. With a successful hit on a wounded survivor, they will get knocked down, allowing the killer to pick them up. Now carrying a survivor can be a bit difficult because the survivors can squirm, which affects their movement to the hooks. I think the hardest part is trying to get the prompt to show to hook the survivor. It seems that the window is too small for a low mobility user. But overall, I think some of the killer mechanics are a tad more accessible than playing as survivors. If you watched this video and thought, hey, I think I could play Dead by Daylight, I wanted to share with you who I think is the most accessible killer from the starting killers. And for me, it is the Trapper. His active ability is picking up and placing traps. It's definitely one of the easiest skills of the starting killers. I hope this video gave you the necessary information to decide if you can play Dead by Daylight. And if you're looking for even more info regarding accessibility in video games, please come follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash one hand mostly. I stream most weekends giving feedback on how I play certain games with cerebral palsy. So until next time, keep leveling up.